one. Stay off the docks. Don't. Uh. Pads on your stomach. Eyes relieves the pain. What did you... What did you do to them? They did it to themselves. Who are you? Lee. Lee Chong. May it be well with you. Friend, company rules, no easy riders. Thanks, buddy. In traction. It's our first break, Duke. Well, I guess if you happen to enjoy being pounded on, okay, it's our first break. Now, all we got so far is bits and pieces that almost add up. We need one good solid link to nail Mm-hmm. You think all we have to do is connect Arvin with that goon who went after you last night, and it's a wrap-up, huh? How do you know Arvin sent him? Well, he's our man, all right. All we have to do is keep crowding him. Mm-hmm. Is this the... Uh, Lee Chung, Duke Page. Hello. You look so mild. Not... None of these. Well, that's a whole zoo. Every gorilla we ever busted for leaning on people. Send Jed in with a sketch pad. As the only witness, Mr. Jung, you could inherit some nasty problems. I'm going to assign somebody to keep an eye on you. Thank you, but I don't think so. You got any idea what's involved in this whole business? No. It's a symptom of a national disease. It's, it's wasteful, it's corrupt. We have the second largest port here in the country, and a million bucks worth of goods a month are stolen and hijacked off our docks. Why don't you arrest the people responsible? Good question. Well, everybody points the finger at everybody else, Lee, if they talk at all. Everybody's innocent or silent or both. A man named Arvin is our prime suspect right now. He runs a trucking business. But somehow, we just can't seem to connect him directly with any of the hijackings. Okay, Mr. Chung. You gotta look at one of those men. Let's try and describe them now and be as specific as you can. Meantime, Mike, 
Listen to what the man says. Keep off the docks. Mike, will you please stop using your nose and use your head? Why are you being so stubborn? Could be I've got a death wish. Yeah. Well, I can cancel your insurance, you know. You gotta promise to cool it, baby. I'm getting close. They wouldn't have sent that delegation after me. Look, Mike, you've gone as far on this one as my conscience will let you go. So you'll follow through with the police and the dock security people. Exactly. While I sit home and what? Supervise, kibitz? Oh, sorry, Duke. That little party last night just whetted my appetite to bring Arvin crashing down. Admit it. This one needs men with eyes in the back of their heads. <laughs> Curious place for your eyes if you intend to go forward. Make sure you describe the boys just enough. Right, Mr. Hart. Four kids. I got photos to prove them. For you. Yeah. What is it? One thousand bucks. Which kid do you want to buy? Well, I'll ask you to describe us. How will you do that? How do you want me to do it? The truth. Do I have to mention a thousand bucks? Somehow I don't worry about that part. Did Lee Chung say why he wouldn't teach me? The usefulness of a cup is in its emptiness. I'm quoting him. I think it sounds more like something you'd say, Nikki. Did the eyes help? That helped the bruises, but I got frostbite. Lee, I want you to teach me what you did the other night. I already told Miss Bell I can't. I'm willing to empty my cup in order to taste your tea. Your open-mindedness is cool, but it doesn't change anything. I don't believe in system, Mr. Longstreet, nor in method. Now, without system, without method, what's to teach? Yeah, but you had to learn. You weren't born knowing how to take apart three men in a matter of seconds. True. But I found a cause of my ignorance. Well, help me find mine. What's going on here? Who won the Battle of Agincourt? I think it was the English. Yes, it was the English. Their archers cut down the flower of French nobility, if I remember my history correctly. Well, how come every time I play Agincourt with Mr. Longstreet, he loses? Well, if he takes the French side, he'd more or less have to. With all these uh, bowmen you have at your disposal here. But I'm the French. He's the English. Oh, he's not the same man, Mr. Page. Not since they beat him up. Oh, he may look the same, but not when he thinks nobody's watching. I'm worried about him. Well, just because he's losing at Agincourt, Mrs. Kingston, doesn't mean he's going to lose at New Orleans. Kick me in the stomach as hard as you can. Oh, wait a minute. I don't want to hurt you. I'm holding an air shield. Come on, drive right through it, won't I? I'll risk it. <laughs> okay. Come in. Now put your hands in here. Hold it against your side. Brace yourself. <laughs> now I want you to feel the difference when I put my body behind the kick. When I count to three, exhale strongly. I'll be kicking you. Okay. Can you stand behind me? Who's there? Who is that? It's me, baby. Oh. Just in time to pick up the pieces. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. You ready? Ready. One. 
A two. A three. Hey, hey. Ah, you all right? What did I tell you? That guy's fantastic. Pax, quiet, quiet down, boy. Quiet. Quiet, he's a friend. Yes. Thought to your fist. How much time was lost? Not much. <laughs> yeah, Lee's gonna teach me all this. I cannot teach you. Only help you to explore yourself. Nothing more. All right, all right. Come on, let's uh, let's explore some more of those kicks, huh? Hey, stick around, Duke. May pick up some pointers. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike, somebody just hijacked a consignment of pharmaceuticals, mostly vitamins and aspirin, a hundred thousand dollars worth. Why? Right, somebody sure must have big a big headache. I know, <laughs> I know. From which pier? Six. What's his name again? Uh, Lee Chung. Lee. Sergeant Corey has a sketch for you to look at. It isn't anything you'd want to hang in your shop, but uh, whatever you can tear yourself away. All right. Okay, Mike. Uh, enjoy yourself. Okay, thanks. Uh, Nikki, would you walk me out, please? Sure. Uh, excuse me a minute, will you? Sure. Yes, operator, I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call, Mr. Mel Hansen, St. Paul. Did you call me back? What's gotten into him? These lessons? Mm-hmm. He wouldn't be knocking himself out like this unless he had something specific in mind. What he has in mind is not feeling so helpless the next time somebody starts working him over. There must be another way to make a living. Not for him. He's only trying to prove to himself that he can cope. you a question. Mm -hmm. What happens now? Machinery closes in. We start living in his shoes. He goes somewhere we go. Only he doesn't know that if we're good. I think you are. So do we. Too rigid. Now listen to the beat and listen to my movement, okay? Trying to learn how to fight, not how to think. May it be well with you, Mike. Wait, wait a minute, what are you doing? What are you doing? You quitting? Still in one piece? We're grassing nicely. I have let him go. I'm certainly glad to hear that. We're running out of ice cubes around here. But uh, in terms of his learning anything, has he? His warehouse having burned down. Nothing obscure his view of the bright moon. I got you. Bye. Bye -bye. If 
Joshua had that record at Jericho... Oh, the walls would have tumbled in seven minutes, not seven days. What kind of birds are these? Where? Yeah, I gotta learn to differentiate between birds. Oh. I uh, passed Lee on the way out. He seemed quite pleased. Why not? He's a sadist. Well, apparently, he thinks you've made some kind of breakthrough. Ought to keep your front gate locked, Mr. Longstreet. Hi, Sergeant. Sergeant Corey, Nicky Bell. Hi. Hi. Nicky's my assistant. Your crumb bag, Mike. Dude named Jim Bolt. No priors. That's why we missed him in the mug file. Yeah, Lee told me you spotted him. Pier 6? Uh-huh. Ramrod's a gang of longshoremen. So he doesn't work for Arvin? Well, not openly, anyway. We're on him around the clock. He so much as goes near Arvin, we'll lock up the connection, I promise you. But he hasn't, huh? Not yet. We put a tap on the Pier 6 payphone. He's no dummy. Oh, well, maybe he needs to be shook up a little bit. Shook up? Uh, motivated. Go on. Oh, that's all, just a thought. Listen, Mike, if you have any bright idea... <laughs> I didn't say it was bright. Nice to have met you. You uh, were speaking English, weren't you, both of you? Uh, you have a cocktail late at six, don't you, Nicky? All right. Uh, Mrs. Kingston, uh, you about ready? I'll drop you. Be right there. Mike? I have a day, too, Nicky. With Jim Bolt? He might be there. And suppose he is. I'll buy him a drink. Fresh purse. Thank you. I'll uh, just be a minute. Uh, the car's right in front. All right. Night, Mr. Longstreet. Three feet to your right. Mrs. Kingston moved the mirror this afternoon. It uh, offends her sense of spontaneity that everything in this house has to be bolted down. Well, it bothers me a lot more when I bang my shins. She thought the mirror was the one safe thing she could move. I must look pretty weird standing here looking at myself in a painting. What do you see when you look in the mirror? A memory. What do you see? Alice in Wonderland. I dream about you. Did you know that? I wondered if you did. You any idea how frustrating it is to dream about somebody you've never seen? Yes, I do. I'm an expert on limbo and states of suspension. Mike, don't go. It's not very intelligent. Well, you're right, Nicky. It's more in the visceral department, something from the gut. Good night, Mike. Bolt here. Over here, buddy. Bolt, they tell me you're a gorilla. I disagree. I figure you're more for a chimpanzee. How do you feel about that? I always think of myself more as a fox. <laughs> How about a drink? Bolt, I'm coming down to Pier 6 one week from the day, 12 noon sharp. And I'm personally going to knock you in the river. <laughs> Wait for him today. Yeah. Maybe I better go into training, huh? Buy myself a dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Mac, beer for everybody. Pour Buddy Boys into his tin cup. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bolt, I don't believe I know you. Come on, come on, come on. This is a payphone. Nobody knows I'm calling. But Longstreet just came in here. Did a crazy thing. Said he's going to meet me on the dock next week and toss me in the river. All right. He got to you. But he doesn't know anything, and he can't do anything unless you get to me. Don't get to me again. None of his foolish enough to attack you on the dock. You uh, simply have to defend yourself any way you can. Do you understand? Yesterday, can we pick up where we left off? It's, um, no, it's a matter of survival now. I, I talked to Jim Bolt. You went to him? I tried to get him to blow his cool, but uh, so far it hasn't worked. Well, now I have to go down to the dock and fight him. You have a quarrelsome mind, Mr. Longstreet. Unless you learn how to calm it, you will never hear the world outside. Now you just tell me what I have to do to get you back. Nothing you can do. All right, then I'll just, uh, just have to fight him as he is. Oh, well, yeah, I want you to believe it's, uh, it's more than just learning how to defend myself. Well, there were a couple of times there when you were teaching me that I, uh, <laughs> I felt that my body and my head really were together. It's, uh, it's funny that out of a martial art, out of combat, I, uh, I'd feel something, something peaceful. Something without hostility. Almost as though if I... Well, if I knew Jeet Kune Do, it'd be enough simply to know it, and by knowing it, never have to use it. Do you always know the right thing to say? Have I said it? I'm sorry. Now, how many of the other guys think a blind man can take me? I didn't say he could take you, Jim. I just asked Bill what kind of odds he'd give if the guy showed up. Hell, nobody showed. A grandstand play, that's all. Who is that guy? What does he want from your life, Jim? How do I know? Now, you guys get back to work. Come on, you guys. On a job. Sensitivity. That's it. Good. Good. Mr. Longstreet. Telephone. St. Paul calling. <coughs> okay, thanks, sir. Excuse me, Natalie. Yeah. The city, not the saint. Uh, that's too bad we could use the help. See if you can find Nikki, will you? All right. Hello. Oh, yeah, ma'am. Hi, how are you? Been trying to get you all week. 
Listen, your secretary tell you what I need. Uh, yeah, just a sec. Okay, go ahead, shoot. J O one five four through what? T nine seven three eight. Now that's it. The entire consignment. Okay. Thanks, man. Listen, uh, give my love to Betty, will you? Right. Mrs. Kingston? Gosh, out. This is a Spartan hoplite. My, my. And Persians. Where'd we get these? A friend of mine. Oh, that really something. Maybe I had a reason. Uh, Nikki, I talked to Mel Hanson in St. Paul. Here are the serial numbers. Mike. Get a list of the drugstores together. We'll take off as soon as I finish up with Lee. I simply asked him, is that the freshest you've got? He should have seen his face, Mike. He said, lady, aspirin's not like asparagus. We don't go out and pick it every morning. Well, I looked around the drugstore as though I were in a whole field of asparagus, and I whispered to him, please, sir, pretend aspirin is like asparagus, please, and pick me 10 stalks of your most recent crop. 10 bottles? Lady, that's a 1,000 tablets. If you took two every four hours, 10 bottles would last you. <laughs> <laughs> Famous battle of history is that. <laughs> Hiya, Duke. Finally reached Mel Hanson, St. Paul. Oh, great. Who's Mel Hanson? That's it. It's conclusive, huh? I'd say. Uh, he's a plant manager for Newburgh Drugs, consigner for that shipment of hijacked pharmaceuticals. I asked him for a list of the serial numbers. You did know that there's a serial number on each bottle to indicate what lot it comes from, didn't you? Oh, fascinating. Yeah, only this time the numbers on the original invoice differ from those in the bill of lading. I mean, uh, somebody changed them? Oh, probably a clerk. A needle clerk and a haystack of clerks. Nikki and I have been shopping in most of the drugstores in town. Hijacked pharmaceuticals busting out all over. It's like asparagus. <laughs> Sounds exciting. Where? Uh, the leading cut rate operations right on down to the corner drugstore. Canal Street, Lakefront, Uptown. Did you put some people on it? I'd, uh, I'd do it myself if I weren't so sore. Every muscle in my body aches. You're still doing that, huh? What do you call it? A Jeet Kune Do, yeah. Yeah, still doing it. Why, Mike? Because um, you got pounded on a little? Uh, something like that. Okay, Mike, I'll... Uh, I'll put some people on your drugstores. Uh, it shouldn't be hard to find out where they bought the stolen goods. No, I wouldn't count on that. Well, you can't go around town peddling $100,000 worth of hijacked pharmaceuticals to a bunch of honest merchants and not leave tracks. <laughs> Who says they're all honest? The name of the game is collusion. Everybody's got his hand in everyone else's pocket and mums the word. Otherwise, the game gets called. You're getting louder. Yeah, and angrier, too. More frustrated. We've all got pockets, Mike. I just don't like somebody else's hand in mine. Not the company's, mine. And yours, and everyone else's. I got a real hate for being had. Anyway, all these pills will probably lead us back to where we already were. The Arvin Transfer Company in a crashing silence. Until we can connect Arvin to that guy he sent after me. To Jim Bolt. Till we can wrap them up together. Ten bucks, the blind man's got something going for himself. Look, stands to reason. Guy can't see, right? But he walks in here. Just comes right in and spits in Jim's face. <laughs> now, uh, he don't look stupid to me, you know. So I say he's got to have something going for himself. Okay, come on. All right, I'll lay five to one on the dark horse. What do you say? All right, I got 50. Says Bolt will bury him. You're on. Oh, you guys just won't let it lay, will you? Uh, no, nothing personal, Jim. <laughs> That's the end of it. 
don't ever want to hear any more about it. Ever. Where are my eyes? Point to them. Thrust to them. What? Finger jab. No. Don't worry, I've covered them. I'm sorry, I can't do it. Because of your blindness? I just can't do it. Listen, the finger jab is a most effective attack. Well, let's just forget that attack, shall we? The man who beat you up that night, would he hesitate to gouge out your eyes? Look, that's his problem. A bird would, a cat would, without thinking. No, I'm not a bird, I'm not a cat, and I do think. That's your problem. All right, forget about the eye jab. Now, you can sense where my eyes are, right? Relax, relax. Now, that's the eye flick. Psychic. All right, now, listen to me. Listen to my movement, okay? Ready? Keep moving. Flick and go. Now, the two motions are both part of one motion. Now, you try it. Faster. A little bit smoother. Well, <clears throat> your head and body are still not one. Well, when will they get together? Once more! What's the matter, Jim? Who thought that up? What? Them glasses. Oh. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. The, the sun, you know. <laughs> Gotta throw you in the river. Position, your arms are useless. Yeah. Can you kick or stomp me? <coughs> no. Then, if you wish to survive, what do you do? I don't know. Bite. Bite? Well, are we not animals? <coughs> <coughs> you all right? Mm. I can't find much evidence the contrary, Lee. Bite. Biting is efficient in close quarter, but don't make a plan of biting. That is a very good way to lose your teeth. There's so much to remember. If you try to remember, you will lose. Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now, you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. Put it into a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now, water can flow or creep or drip or crash. Be water, my friend. Yeah. Why don't I just stand in front of Bolt and recite that to him? Maybe he'll faint or drown. When is it? Tomorrow. You are not ready. I know. Like everyone else, you want to learn the way to win but never to accept the way to lose. To accept defeat. To learn to die is to be liberated from it. So when tomorrow comes, you must free your ambitious mind and learn the art of dying. May it be well with you, Mike. What's 
far as it goes, Mike, Bolt made the call, but Arvin hung up on him. He brought in the truck and showed him Arvin's picture. He said, no way, that wasn't the cat that hijacked him. I get the feeling he's lying. I probably paid him off. We're keeping Arvin under surveillance and Bolt, but... I'd double up tomorrow if I were you, Sergeant. As many men as you can spring loose to watch Bolt. He may just flip out, go running straight to Arvin. When tomorrow? Well, any time from noon on. Um, so, uh, what happens tomorrow? As Lee Chung said, may it be well. That smacks of the inscrutable. Okay, Mike. That's where we stand. You're up to date. We'll keep in touch, huh? Okay, Sergeant, thanks. Evening, Miss Bell. Good night. Good night. All right, Mike. Uh... Let's see what you could do now with all of Nicky's Spartans here. Hmm, yeah. You got them all set up? Mm hmm. Okay. Now, here are my Persians. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh uh. It's supposed to be a small pass through here. I'm supposed to be able to get around behind your Spartans. Uh, my Thermopylae is different, Mike. We executed the traitors from Traegers before they could uh, show you the secret pass through the mountains. <laughs> You'll have to attack from the front. Those are the rules of the game. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You want the uh, Persians to lose? No. I want them to retreat, Mike. I want them to give up this battle. And deny your Spartans a chance to meet the enemy face to face? You mean show the world how brave they are? What was that thing he said, that thing, uh, I think King Leonides said, go tell the Spartans, thou that passeth by, that here obedient to their laws we lie. King Leonides died at Thermopylae, Mike. Hi, Mr. Longstreet. Good morning, Jesse. Here's somebody worked you over a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. The answer is ice, Jesse. Lots of ice. You haven't said a word. And I don't intend to. Don't you understand why I have to try this? Nope. Look, Nicky, if I can last, just last for a minute, two minutes, he will lose face in front of his men. He's got the kind of character that can't stand that. So he'll have to get even with me later on when no one's watching. To do that, he'll need an okay from Marvin. I figure he'll go straight to Arvin. And it's up to Sergeant Corey. I just wonder how many millions of women, mothers, wives, sweethearts, have listened to the same kind of stupid justification for one man to go out and fight another. What do we do? We just let them keep on hijacking? Nobody stand in front of those trucks. I guess somebody always feels as though he has to. You know, he can really hurt you this time. Why can't you think about that? I'm trying not to. Fear six, you see it yet? I see it. Okay, stop here. You see Bolt? Yeah, 10 o'clock, about 20 yards. Level ground, nothing in the way. the others. Bolt? Yeah? It's noon. Yeah. You better get out of here. Tell him why I came. Because you're crazy. Tell him how you and a couple of your friends jumped me, three of you. One guy held my right arm, the other my left, and you pounded away in my gut. Isn't that how it was, Bolt? He's lying. Tell him why. You're giving Longshoreman a bad name. Shut up. Now, I put it to you men. Would a blind man come down here and even try to fight him if he didn't have a good reason? Come on, Bolt, show him how good you are. Come on.
body are uh, still not one. Well, when will they get together? Don't charge in blindly. You've got to listen. Listen. Very good. Now, move with it. That's it. Now, open it up a little bit. Feel the wind blowing. You must free your ambitious mind and learn the art of dying. It was a hard act to follow, Mike, but we'll try and top you. He'll go to Arvin. He'll go now. I know it. Oh, we'll stay with him. Don't worry. We'll stay with all of them. I got a hunch. Bolt's crew will feel more like talking now that you showed him that the gorilla's only a man. Hey, where'd you learn to fight like that? Drinking tea from, a, from an empty cup. Prison Break, next on Mystery.